Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm Stacy, and tonight we are going to do a little um, watercolor landscape. I'm gonna, hopefully this will be short and sweet. Uh, we're gonna use just a few colors. Um, variations, like, I have my Quinn, or Quinn, my, wow, my thoughts are hard. I haven't talked to anybody today. <laughs> So, uh, this is the first time I've spoken to anybody all day today. The, um, my M. Graham palette. So we're going to use M. Graham colors. We're going to use, instead of black, which I d don't have on my palette, we're going to use Payne's Gray. Um, and for the eggplant color and the, um, the mulberry, we're going to mix Payne's Gray and Quinn Violet. Those will make, um, nice variations of that color. And then... For the auburn, I was thinking that we could use um, sienna for auburn mixed with a touch of um, quin rose, and then and then we can use those two colors as well to kind of get a more peachy color. Maybe mix Chinese orange with a touch of quin. We'll see. We'll play with colors and see see how they turn out. But this is the reference photo that I'm using tonight. Um, the pinks are showing super vibrant on the camera. It's going to be a little more muted for me, probably. I'm going to set that up there. And this up here. I have out my regular brushes that I usually use in my paintings. My Princeton Neptunes round number 8 and 18. And then for the wash, I have out my um, Creative Mark Mimic wash number 2. And I'm working on Fluid 100. <coughs> Excuse me. Fluid 100. Um, 300 pound cold press watercolor paper. This this paper um, doesn't buckle. It is a little thirsty, but it doesn't buckle um, as much as the 140, which is why I really like working on it. So I don't have to tape it down if I don't want to. It's most likely especially if I don't go too heavy with the water in any one area. Not going to buckle on me. Now I went ahead and used my... Um, a my hair. My, um, now that my hair is long again, I, I find it everywhere. Um, a mechanical pencil, cheese and rice. To do a light sketch of where I want my mountains to be. And we're going to go in after I wet this down. I want my sky to be nice and wet. We're going to go in. i got a little bit of red on the table there still. That's all right. With the big 18. And this is a mixture of my Quinn and... Here, we'll just go ahead and do it. This is Quinn Violet. It's a very mulberry-ish color, um, and if we put a um, eggplant, we can use a little bit of dioxazine for the eggplant. There's our our dioxazine and a touch of neutral tint in that to kind of mute it out and make it look more eggplanty. There we go. That's a little better. Yeah, close to black, but not quite. Um, but here's our Quinn for Mulberry with just a touch of neutral tint in it to kind of mute that out. But it is a little too dark, so we're going to put a little bit of Quinn Rose in there. And there we go. We have a Mulberry-esque color, maybe a little more neutral tint. There. Yeah. Alright. Maybe we should go ahead. I'm going to try and stay in these three pans. Um, which one did I say? Burnt Sienna. Sienna. Mixed. That's our auburn color. And then Quinn Rose. 
Yeah. A touch of Chinese orange in it. Will give us that kind of salmony color. I feel like I need to put white in it, but we're gonna just roll with those colors for now. We'll see what that does in our landscape. Let's flip that back over. Because I can go a little lighter and a little more peachy. If I need maybe some yellow in there. Oh, there we go. That gives us a more peachy color. Ah, oh, that Quinn Rose is super strong. Alright. I'm going to start off with dioxazine. Just straight dioxazine up in this corner. Oh, that's not straight, is it? I'm going to... Oops, that's the mulberry color. Or the brown color. some of that Quinn in there as well. They mix well together. They look really pretty on the page. And you can tilt your page and let the paint just kind of run together, which is a really nice effect. We can run all of this right down, right down like that. Cool. I'll take a little bit of neutral tint and put that in this corner. So it's going to dry down lighter than it is right now. There. And then this side is more pink. Ooh, I do love, I love watercolor so much. <laughs> A little bit of pink right there. And down here. I'm leaving, a, I'm going to try to leave a white line between my mountain and my sky. I want a little bit of more Pink over here. That's pretty, right? I lost the tip on my mountain, but that's okay. We can we can put that back later. And then I'm gonna kind of soften that out. To do that, you gotta dry your brush off pretty well, and then just pick it up. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, that's super pretty. I dig it. I'm gonna really leave those sweeps in there too, cause I like it. Cause I like it. Might as well just bring this color down into our mountain like that. Okay, and then I need a little bit of this eggplanty kind of color down here. My paper dried a little bit. And some dirty water. My dirty water will do a lot of the work for me too. I got a little bit of Too much color right there. Put some peach. It's a little dirty, but that's okay. I don't care for that there. I'll just sweep it in. Weird peach color. Our mountains right in there. To there. Still trying to leave that little bit of a white line 
between my mountains and my clouds because this is if you were high up in the mountains this right here isn't water it's like a cloudscape um, and if you've never been in the mountains to see that I highly recommend that you do that it is highly, highly, highly recommended. Alright. We'll let that dry a little bit right there. Drop in just a little bit of darkness. And down here. And our weird colors over here. So, our, what is this again? Neutral tints and Quinn, and a touch of dioxazine, and a lot of water. More neutral tint. There we go. Because this side's a little more dark in our reference photo. Kind of comes through a little bits there and then right there. I know it looks like a muddy mess right now, but when we get our mountains in, it will um, define the space better. I do want to... light through there. That also helps delineate those. And then I want some, I really want some pale, pale pink down here. A little more rosy through here. Run the brush across it, it's all good. Pull it that way. Dry that brush. That white line back a little bit there. Nice. And then we're gonna go dioxazine and neutral tints. Right through here. down to the bottom of the page. This corner is nice and dark. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. Take it. I take it. To soften that edge. And to give it a more cloudscape effect, I'm going to go ahead and put in some cloud type feels. I don't even know what that means. Cloud type feels. <laughs> there we go. Just some textures with the with the napkin. It also reminds me of flowers. But yeah, I dig that. Alright, cool. 
Good enough. Now, um, now, oh, I hit the, I hit it up here. Did not mean to do that. Messed with my blend. Did you see that? That's just silly. That's just silly. I'll just. alone. Leave it alone. I think that looks really pretty right now. I'm really digging this down here too. All right, let's put in our mountain. Oh, I wanted to dry this part more because it's going to bleed if I don't. I'll edit this part out though. I think I'm good. We're going to take our, I need to get that eggplant color back going. Touch a neutral tint. Touch a pink. There we go. Okay. Now. I'm just kind of wetting back in the shape of my mountain. dark up here on this edge all the way down to there oh it's so pretty so pretty and then this edge all the way down to there Nice and dark right there. And that dark here. Like that. Popping on some neutral tint to kind of mute that out a little bit. Make it a little more dramatic. Like that. Yeah, I do that. And then down like that. I think it's closer to me. I can't hardly really see what I'm doing here.
It's a little muted on the bottom there. A little muted, and then we just drop some neutral tint on that purple in all the right spots. Do what makes you feel good. Sorry, guys, I had to change my battery. Oh. And it's just dropping in color at this point on those mountains to make them look the way I want them to look. bit of water. This is dried all out on me. I'm going to pull that down like that. Make it nice and fuzzy. Pull that down there. Like that. I feel like it's not dark enough. A more inky consistency, maybe. Tip right here is really dark. Right through there. Nice. That starts to get glowy in there. More of a pink than a deep purple. Right in here. Dropping in color, wet and wet. Just kind of letting it bleed around and do its thing. So that orangey mix in there, here and there, why not? That's a little interest. I dig it. Okay. Moving on, we got our super light. Misty Mountains back here. Dropping in some of that orange just to give it some interest and then Just patting, tapping, and there we go, a little bit of mist. Maybe wet this area right here as well. in there and then make that a little misty as well right through there yeah that looks pretty okay I dig it now what do we have left to do really nothing not much it looks like a little bit of a Seashore here. Let's try 
out a bit. Comes down there. Kind of mists out into the clouds. Like that. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay. Am I done? I think I'm done. Oh my gosh. That was a really fast painting. I feel like my mountains could be a little darker. But I also feel like if I futz around with them too much more, they're not going to look where I am. this part up a little bit. Make it look a little less light right through there. That's a little better. And I feel like a little touch more on back mountains. Okay, I'm gonna stop fussing. Oh wait, I almost forgot this side over here. This whole piece is like... Tinted cloud area. Back behind the mountain, going up into the mountains. And then kind of... Kind of misting that direction. Yeah, that's a little better. Not a lot, but a little. Our cloud line stops right there. Perfect. Yes. I believe so. Yeah. Perfect. All right, we're done. We are all done. Here's our referrals. I didn't go as pink as I could have, I suppose. Could have got more pink in there. But I'm satisfied with it. It's a nice practice, right? I dig it, and I love working on 300 pound paper. It's amazing. Um, if you can afford it, I recommend it. At least getting a pack like this, and then maybe you could cut them down and use the... the like make cards or something um but yeah for tonight this is our practice let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you guys in the next video bye